I am Dejane Bluett. I am one of the first classes for the data science class for the Denver branch of Galvanite. Um, I have a background in engineering and an MBA. I was doing project management and business analytics, and I got to a point where I was using a lot of data analysis to either do forecasting on new product sales or to find um, insights and present that out to the sales team. And I got to a point where I was kind of stifled what I could do with Excel, so I taught myself R and started creating my own models in R, and then I kind of got to a point where I was like, there's so much more out there that I can learn to actually provide better you know, data analysis, provide better product analysis, and so I decided to look into data science programs, which led me here to Galvanize. So because of my background in engineering and business, I realized that there are a lot of like methods that we will call data science methods that are actually really beneficial to the business world that aren't being used. And so I wanted to present data science in a way that is very approachable to the world of business. So what I did was took a, a pretty common situation in business and showed how you can use data science tools to um, approach it. So what I did was I took some um, financial marketing data and from that marketing data, it was basically data on whether someone would buy a certain type of financial um, package, similar to like investment accounts. And I basically went through this and was able to use several data science approaches to create this end model that says, hey, if I have this customer with these type of customer characteristics, here's the probability of this customer buying this um, investment account. So talking about it from start to beginning, I basically used you know, unsupervised learning to identify customer clusters, and I was able to identify about four distinct customer clusters. clusters. And then I actually did some parametric modeling to identify which features were actually relevant to the different customer clusters. And I was using basically uh, correlation matrices, which are really easy to explain to someone who is not a data analyst or a data scientist. And then once I had identified my relevant features, I actually used machine learning to create predictive models. And with this machine learning, I was using gradient boosting on a random forest um, classifier. And once I was able to have my four different um, predictive models for my four different customer clusters, I actually created this UI interface, which created this interactive dashboard app where you can go in, so let's say you know, your field sales team is out on a sales call, they can log on to this app and type in the customer's information and it'll pop up um, the probability of the customer buying this product and it also popped up what features this customer is likely to be more interested in so that that field sales guy can you know, highlight those features. And then if you're actually in-house and in the office, you know, the marketing team and the product development team can use this to figure out, you know, are we actually highlighting or are we actually talking about the features that are resonating with the customers? And the product development team can see like what features are actually resonating and what features are not resonating. And if the features that are not resonating are actually something that's pretty amazing about our product, then maybe we should think about how do we position this in a way that the customer actually realizes that this is pretty cool or maybe this is something that the customer doesn't need and we can take it out and provide a cheaper product. So I use very traditional data science application and methods to approach a situation that no matter what type of business you're in, you have this situation and you can see how data scientists can be beneficial from the beginning as opposed to something to where you're looking at data for long periods of time to pull out insights. There's the traditional challenge that anyone who works with large data sets has is you know, the data cleaning, trying to get the data in a format to where you can actually perform analysis on it. That's always, it's not challenging, it's just tedious, it takes a long time. And then once you get through that, uh, one of the challenges is because I was using data that I pulled off the internet, I didn't have a team to go to and say, hey, like, what does this feature mean? And when I say feature, I'm talking about um, like different characteristics because I actually use Portuguese data and so I kind of translated it. But that was a little frustrating. And But like if you're working with a company or if you're doing consulting work, you always have that option to go and talk to the team and talk to the clients to get that clarification. Um, I would say the most frustrating part was actually the very end 
when I was putting my model into a UI application because, I mean, I'm not a web designer, so I had to teach myself application design and web design in the course of a couple of days so that I can have something that was pretty and easy to use. I actually used a couple of methods that were easier to explain to a non-data scientist. So one of the first ones I mentioned was when I was using um, parametric modeling to figure out which features or which characteristics are actually important to predicting the outcome. I use uh, a correlation matrix, which one, correlation matrices are very visually um, understandable, so if I just print it, you can clearly see, like, if there's four features, you can see that this feature has a higher impact compared to this feature. And so it's just very easy to see the, the relationship between the different features in your outcome. There's other methods that you can use that are actually more precise, but you kind of get into that black box of, you know, it goes into the model and it shoots out an answer, but you don't have um, weights or anything that you can easily explain to someone else. And another thing I used was when I was actually making my predicting models, I used machine learning. And there's so many different types of machine learnings that you can use, but I use a random forest-based grading and boosting. And with random forest, random forest is basically a fancy decision tree, and it's very easy to explain it a decision tree. So like with a decision tree, you look at one instance, and so like in my case, it's a customer, and you say, at this level, is this customer you know, older than 50 or younger than 50? And then it goes down, and then it says, you know, is this customer, does it have a graduate degree or, or not? It's yes or no questions, it's just that there are thousands of thousands of yes or no questions. So, but that's something that people can visualize that and they can see that. So, um, I mentioned that my background was in engineering, and I was actually in civil engineering and I was a project manager and I kind of got into a role where I was promoted really quickly and I had more of the business side and less of the engineering, which kind of like opened my eyes to, hey, I need to learn more about business. And so I decided to go and get my MBA. And when I was doing my MBA, I realized that I really like, you know, our statistics class and like applying statistics to business you know, our predictive modeling, our marketing research. I really love doing those type of things. Unfortunately, when I was getting my MBA, the term data science was, I think it didn't come onto the screen until a semester before I was done. So I couldn't really, I didn't know what it was and I couldn't um, major in it, but I was doing that type of stuff and I was interested in that type of stuff and excelling in those type of things. And when I left my MBA, I looked at roles that would allow me to use data analysis and make statistical models and take those insights and basically say, hey, these are my recommendations or these are the things we should focus on and like show the business applications. And so when I was a business analyst, I was given the opportunity to do that with some new products. And I really enjoyed, you know, the balance of spending a day like looking at data all day and then trying to create a model and then once I see the insights, being able to put it in a package or in a format that other people can understand it and understand what they need to do moving forward. And by doing that, I was teaching myself a lot of things like after work and like I taught myself R and I was building all these models and I realized that I really enjoy doing this and there's so much more that I can learn and make and be better at this. And so that kind of like when it clicked that, hey, I should probably, in, instead of teaching myself at home, I should probably go and get more formal training on the different models and the different approaches to building these models.